Welcome to episode two of the all-wheel drive Mustang build. I'm pretty excited about all the positive uh, questions and comments on the first video. So here's video number two. Um, I'm going to cover two things in, uh, in this video. First I'm going to go over the front diff and then uh, some questions and comments about the spindles. So the front diff is actually, to me, in my opinion, the hardest part of the whole project. Uh, to be honest, if you cut a big enough hole in the floor, you pretty much fit any kind of transmission and transfer case in the car. But being able to fit the differential in the front of the car um, far enough forward and basically high enough to get reasonable CV axle angles is the really the biggest challenge of the whole project and how to get a diff to fit next to the engine. And so that's really what I started working on. You know, I've had the car almost two years and started this in the uh, fall of 19, I guess. And, um, and I basically spent most of that time with working on the differential, like what differential um, and how to mount it to, to the engine and figure out angles, etc., etc. So that's what I'll focus on first, and here we go. Here's uh, the, the current path on the differential. So here's a mock-up jump block I got from my wrecking yard. And here it is. So you're going to ask yourself, what is that? Well, that is a differential from a Toyota pickup, like an 85 through 86 Toyota pickup. And yes, it is an iron case. And it may seem like an odd choice on the surface. And it for sure wasn't my first choice. I actually spent a lot of time researching diffs and had a couple different options. Here were other options I was trying to do. Um, this was my first choice actually, which is a seven and a quarter IFS diff from like a Chevy Trailblazer. And I actually destroyed one whole, um, one of these diffs, cutting it up, trying to make it fit. And many months actually. This is basically the same kind of diff I put in the Mercure. And so I was familiar with it. There's limited slips available. They have the right gear ratio. They're known to be plenty strong. They're super cheap. You know, you can get them all day long. And why not, right? Well, the challenge with putting the uh, trans or the uh, differential on the passenger side of the car is the starter. The starter goes basically. I'm going to shove it in there, right there, right. And also, you get the 11-inch uh, flywheel. And unlike a small block Ford like I had in my Mercure, you know, the Coyote is a full skirt block. And so basically the, the block goes down past the mains. And so I couldn't suck in the differential as far. And, but the biggest deal is the starter and the flywheel. Basically any high pinion diff just didn't want to fit. Um, I started thinking about some crazy ideas like having the diff be angled down and use a CV joint to, uh, you know, on both sides of the front drive shaft. And then I got one of these diffs as almost a joke, and I couldn't believe how well it fit. Um, I also looked at like Dana 30s, but they're considerably wider. Um, so basically, what's the requirement for the front diff? Well, it has to be strong enough, has to have the right gear ratios. That's a problem with a lot of the other front wheel, or excuse me, four wheel drive diffs in modern cars like you know, like Mercedes-Benz and a few other vehicles like that, they have pretty nice, you know, compact diffs, but they don't have the right gear ratios, you know, to get the front and back to be the same. And so um, I'm running 373 gears. Um, they're a little bit hard to get, but I already have 373 gears for the Toyota 7.5 inch diff. And I also just actually just showed up this week. I have a uh, Detroit uh, True Track limited slip differential for it. Uh, here's the gears that came out of that diff. Another option I looked at was this diff here, which is really quite interesting. This is from a Kia, from a Kia Stinger, or also from like a Genesis G70. And as you can see, it's also a low pinion diff, and it's very compact. Um, and I thought really hard about making this this work. They actually do have the right gear ratios, even the. The 2-liter turbo Stinger comes with 373 gears uh, from the factory. This one was a cheap one that isn't the right gear ratio, but I just wanted something to mock up. Um, the fact of the matter is, though, is it really isn't that much smaller. It is lighter. It's about 15 pounds lighter, and I know weight's going to add up here, but there's no readily available limited slips for it. 
and it actually in this direction is is longer than the Toyota diff and that's really the big challenge right of getting this thing to fit is can you get the diff far enough forward and can you get it high enough to get the CV axles to, to be uh, you know a reasonable angle right and so that's the current plan and as you can see there is a shaft there'll be a shaft going through the oil pan I'm going to redo this whole thing again. This was all meant just to be a proof of concept uh, oil pan, but basically um, the differential bolts to the oil pan slash block. There'll be a shaft going through the oil pan that you know barely clears the crank, and then there'll be a bearing assembly over here. This looks like this was just a mock-up um, that will support a jack shaft with a CV joint on the other side, right? Similar to a lot of four-wheel drive cars. Um, you know, not this is not anything new. Just the fabrication is is the tricky part. Next, I want to talk about the spindles. Uh, I might actually change a little bit of a direction. Uh, I posted my build on Mustang 6G and got some really good feedback. And somebody, several people have pushed me again to look at the. Uh, GT350 slash Magnaride front spindles which use a separate bolt-on bearing and I had discounted that because of the short spline but uh, we'll take a look at that and I'll explain what my original path was and the fact that I may be changing direction uh, but here are the spindle options here is a traditional non Magnaride front spindle and um, you know, here's the hub that just goes on like that, right? And my original plan was to take one of these hubs, or one of these spindles, I should say. The original plan was to take one of these spindles and basically cut it off, like right here, and bolt slash weld a piece on to uh, create the rest of the spindle from scratch and have it uh, a unit bearing bolt onto it. Um, I still think that would be doable. But a couple days ago, I got some of these, which is a, bear, um, a spindle from like a 2018 newer car with the Magna Ride. And, uh, you know, here's the hub that bolts on there. And this has all kinds of features and that there's a lot more meat to it. Even if I were to cut up the spindle and, and bolt on a different um, bearing, there's just a lot more meat to the spindle to bolt things to. Obviously you'll have to put a hole in here for the CV joint. And so I think that's the current plan is to use this as the starting point. Um, and so I do have um, an Explorer CV, jo um, CV joint coming to do some mock-up. But my concern here, and hopefully you can, see, you can see this, is that even though the GT350 slash Magnaride front bearings do have a spline in there, it's very short. It's, I don't know, maybe an inch long. And it's a 38 spline, same as the newer Explorers and same as some Chrysler products for that matter. I've done some research. Um, and so, I'm, you know, I guess I've already seen pictures of a CV joint fitting in these things. So it physically fits. But if you look at, like, for example, here is a actual Explorer hub. Let me get some better light here. And you can see how the splines go all the way through it. And I'm concerned about can that short of a spline take any torque. Um, I'm convinced the only reason they even put the splines in there from the factory is so that they can basically roll form this edge. You know, these bearings are self-supporting. You don't actually, of course, need a CV joint in there to hold them together like an older bearing, like, you know, something from a front-wheel drive car. This flange here is formed over and that takes that creates the preload on the bearing and to do that they have to spin it you know and kind of form it and that's why I think there's splines in there at all now am I overthinking this maybe you know I'm not putting a thousand horsepower through one wheel um, it might just be fine and it might be you know might I should just probably go for it and just use these as is I did go ahead and get an Explorer hub which is this one here which has the same spline and to be honest I thought it would fit right on it looks you know if you just look at it it looks the same like you know, I was looking at pictures on the internet and I thought wow well that's that's a 
That'll work. Well, I don't know what Ford was thinking, but they're different. The bolt pattern's different. It, it, and the, and even the pilot damper is different. Um, and so they don't bolt on. And uh, so I thought that was going to be my solution, and it's not. Um, so I am uh, not sure what my current plan is. When I was when I was going down the path of just cutting off this spindle here, this this was the plan right here, and this is a uh, bearing from like a 2010, the last year or two of the Ford Ranger, the old generation Ford Ranger, of course, and this has all kinds of appealing properties. It's probably not as stiff as the MR or Magna Ride spindle, but you know it does have the right bolt pattern. Um, it's it basically with a little bit of machining, it would it'll take the Mustang brakes and and the hub you know, and the, the the diameter for the wheels is the same. It's got a really common 27 spline, you know, spline, I guess. And really awesome is that it's got the built-in ABS sensor, and it's even got the same connector as the Mustang. So we plug right into the harness, and and based on my research, it has the same number of pulses per revolution. So it should just plug right in and work. And so that was my original plan. Um, but that probably won't adapt very well to this MR hub or MR spindle, which I do think is the way to go now. There's just say so much more meat to bolt stuff stuff to. Um, we'll see. Other challenges here is no matter what hub I pick or spindle I pick is the fact that the there's not a whole lot of clearance right here for the CV joint to the lower um, strut mount. And th this ball joint here really encroaches on the space too. As you can see, that goes right there and doesn't leave you a whole lot of room. And so, like I said, my original plan, I was just going to take one of these and cut it up. I was actually going to make a sort of a drop spindle and move the, the bearing up relative to the ball joint to get some more clearance. But... With this being so close to what I need, I'm just trying to maybe find a smaller CV joint and and just make it work. So that's the new direction I'm going. Um, you know, so for example, here's a CV joint from a, a Ford Focus, um, which is a 27 spline, and would actually fit this hub here. But you can see how, how much you know how small it is. And I've actually also got a CV joint from like a Dodge uh, Charger, which is also 27 spline and really isn't any bigger, um, but has more spline. Um, so, anyways, there's readily available much, you know, pretty small diameter CV joints that I think will handle the power, which will help the cause when it comes to trying to clear the ball joint. But the reality is, some of this will have to be machined away to clear, and I haven't quite figured that out. Um, so that's, you know, part of the plan is to figure all that out. Uh, I also intend to try to move the strut back a little bit. And one of the things before I finalized my spindle design, I wanted to get my wheels set up, figured out, and with the right offset, etc., etc. I wanted to use a square setup, you know, basically the same wheels front and back. And of course, for all-wheel drive, I wanted the same diameter front and back. And ultimately what I ended up with was a 19 by 11 inch wheel um, with a 50 inch back spacing and a 295-35 Continental tire. And so um, I last summer, to see how that would ride, I put in a set of uh, Steeda um, shocks or struts in front and back with their 1 inch lowering springs and did what everybody on the internet said to do and I put one inch spacers in the front and I have to say the car was you know semi horrible when it comes to um, the you know finding grooves on the highway and just tram lining like crazy I love the shocks and springs but the with the one inch spacers in the front the car was all over the place even though it seems to be the common thing to do and so being an engineer and overanalyzing things, um, I got rid of the 25 millimeter spacers and went with a 15 millimeter spacer, which normally would cause the wheel to hit the strut. But I basically 
fix that by putting in some camber bolts and doing the opposite of what you normally do to add camber, which would have sucked the wheel, you know, closer to the strut. I actually put the adjusted the camber bolts to decrease the camber and move the wheel farther away from the strut and then compensated by putting ca uh, camber plates on top to get the camber back the way it's supposed to be. As a result, the wheel, you know, without having all kinds of, you know, crazy camber, the wheels were, were really flush with the car. But more importantly, it just dramatically improved the tram lining on the highway. It was really quite transformative. And why this is not a more common thing to do versus the 25 millimeter spacers, I'm not sure. So why does it matter for the all-wheel drive? Well, I'm going to build this offset into my new spindles. And I'm also going to, kind of like Cortex Racing, I'm going to build in more offset into the, you know, the, to push the strut farther away so that it, the wheel clears the, the strut without, you know, having the resort to, ca um, to camber bolts um, or, and, or use spacers for that matter. It'll all just be built into the new modified spindle is the plan. We'll see. Well, thanks for watching the video. Um, in video number three, I think I'll finally get to showing the modifications to the power tunnel. Um, I have made good progress there. We got holes. No going back now. But I'll show that. This video got pretty long already, so I'll show that uh, in the next video. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. And please like and subscribe if you want to keep on seeing the progress of the build. Thanks again.